Dude, we used to have a guy who, who worked up in your office up in Carlsbad, Seth. Yeah, Seth still works for me. Yeah. Yep. And he was a monster listener of our show for years and was so good to me at one time, brought me up to Carlsbad so I could see how you have all oh, your yeah, yeah. ramps and everything. Yep. Plus you had a radio studio you were doing. You yeah, we there? still all still there. Yeah. Still doing it. Yeah. And then all like your merch and everything yeah, in the back. Yep. I mean, I was blown away by how big your business was when I saw it back then. I mean, I knew your brand was huge. I just didn't know that the warehouse and the merchandise and, you know. I, I yeah, we do a lot of stuff there. We also, our foundation is based there. So we have a foundation for public skate parks. We have video production. Um, and then all of our events and licensing is there. It's, it's actually kind of a small crew considering all the different things we do, but that's the beauty of licensing is that someone else does all that legwork. So, um, yeah, you yeah let me anything? know if, uh, if this yeah, is too loud really or, or what the deal is. We're good? We're good? So, but I wish you could Tony, smell. Did you, did you grow <laughs> up going that skate park at oh, the Encinitas fine. Y? Is that really like your No, I, I grew up skating uh, It's called Delmar Skate Ranch. It was right by the uh, fairgrounds. And that was the last that was the last concrete park in California and one of the last skate parks in all the US in the early eighties. So that's really where I where I cut my teeth and um, and then eventually that closed and then there was just a bunch of backyard ramp type of stuff in the area not a bunch a couple and then uh, the NCS YMCA stepped up I think around 1993 how old are you because in the early 80s in like what I think of as being like 86 ish 85 86 I'm a kid in Florida and the Tony Hawk skateboards are starting to hang on the wall oh yeah so how did how did it go from being a little kid just being a good skater to becoming a huge brand as a young kid uh i, I think uh, well a lot of it was the right place the right time i when i started skating it was sort of in a downfall of popularity and then when i started really getting good at it i, I didn't really care because i was really young i didn't think i was choosing a career as i started getting really good at it it came back into the limelight of popularity and that's when I started to hit my stride of competition and skating and, and innovating and so I uh, suddenly found myself literally in 1986 graduating high school with a career that just fell on my lap so that it it, it, it all came not intentionally um, but uh, I was excited because I got to I got to chase my dreams I got to do what I love and um, and that's literally when I got out of high school I was hitting the road touring the world of all the crazy stuff that has happened since then with your brand and your business when you think back on all these years 30 years of being in this business what's the most surprising thing is it a video game is it movies what, what I is think, the well the most surprising element would be how the success of the video game propelled me into this sort of different realm of opportunity i think that's that would be the most unlikely Thing that happened in, in that I didn't think it would be a video game that, that became my calling card um, that got me on The Simpsons that you know got me invited to the White House I mean it was it was a lot of other things I kept skating through all those years but definitely when people hear my name especially these days the immediate association is video games how did you go from a guy who is already having this branded success to continuing to try and be the best athlete in your sport I, I have always just wanted to improve my skills. So that's the thread that's carried me through, that's kept me relevant the whole time, was I wanted to keep getting better. And I didn't care how I fared in the competitions. I mean, I was happy if I was doing well, but at the same time, I wanted to, I wanted the next challenge. I wanted to learn something new. Even after I won a big event, the next day I was at the ramp trying to figure out new tricks. And I, and I think that that constant sort of, not disappointment, but, but desire to prove that I could do more is what has kept me going. Did you did you have anything set up at your house to practice like when you were growing up not, like in the not backyard? Not when I was growing up, no. I, I grew up skating. We used to be Oasis Skate Park. It was right under the uh, 163. Right. And then eventually skated Del Mar Skate Ranch. When that closed um, in 90, let's see, in 1989, I moved to Fallbrook because I could afford land there oh, to yeah, build my a own lot of land. That's when I found it. Okay, so then ramp. you did your thing. And yeah. the reason I ask is because I'm living in Ocean Beach, across the house across from me, someone moves in. I'm thinking that it's MTV and they're doing some crazy, because 
crazy stuff is going on. There are people jumping off the balcony with things strapped to their feet onto a trampoline. And I'm like, what is happening? And then my neighbor decides he's going to pogo stick his way across the street to introduce himself. And it was oh, Andy McDonald. Andy McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say it was trampoline and pogo stick. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, was, cause I was like little Mrs. Kravitz. I'm like, what is going on over there? Yeah. What is happening? But super nice. And, and I just thought that was so crazy. Because when you do a sport like that, you know, it's like you need your space and you need unique things to help yeah, you it's prepare. Yeah, to be living in a city, especially, well, at the time when we couldn't really afford space. That's why I had to move east to Fallbrook Tech to find a place that I could, right. I could afford to, to build a ramp. Um, nowadays, it's so prolific that there are skate parks. I mean, there, there are a dozen right here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. oh, Tony, yeah. let me ask you about this, this event. So Ernie Hahn and I have been very tight for a long time. We had no idea we'd be able to pull off what we're doing right now, oh, yeah. which is to be able to broadcast to YouTube and the TuneIn app and do all of this. We had no idea. We were just experimenting, but we wanted to be here for Ernie. How did you get into this? And and I just think of you as very artistic, so I figured you probably had a hand in picking bands. And and I also found out that your, that your Huck Jam stage is yeah. coming back. I haven't seen the Huck Jam tour since it was in the arena. It's got to be 10 years, dude. Yeah, it's been 10 years since our last tour. Uh, well, for, it came through Ernie. Uh, he and I have mutual friends, obviously. I've been to a bunch, bunch of events. That I always say sports arena, forgive me, but it's just how Pechanga it is. Pachanga Arena now. Yeah. We'll give him Pechanga, his love. But, but, but I, uh, you know, through the years, and he's been really um, supportive of my foundation with, with, with using venues and, and getting bands and things like that. And then when he had this idea, he hit me up immediately, and he said, would you want to be involved? And, I said, yeah, I'd love to, and in what context? And he said, well, we want you to actually help get the bands and maybe bring your skating to it. Um, and then when he presented me with it, I was like, oh, that's, this is amazing. This is much bigger than I imagined. Um, there, uh, there's a lot of opportunity here, and, and off we went. That's really cool, dude, because Ernie's dream was a, a show and a festival in downtown San Diego for San Diegans. Yeah by San Diegans. I mean, I've been listening to him tell me this for years and years and years. It's amazing to watch somebody have an idea and, and watch it manifest into reality. Yeah, and I think because because he came to our our show at the Pachanga Arena where, where it was my Huck Jam and it was skateboarding, BMX, motocross, yeah, it was amazing. and Devo played. And, and Devo only played two of our shows out of 30. But for me, that was, that was the dream realized. Like, yeah. that, that was as far as it could ever go. <laughs> so to be back here... 12 years later and to be sort of reviving that whole idea is is a beyond unbelievable to me so who, who is some of your favorite bands and we've got the lineup they already announced oh, it we've yeah, talked well, the, about on it my stage uh which is more of the huck jam skate punk rock is mm -hmm. pennywise is headlining suicidal tendencies x and vandals all uh, all friends yeah um, oh, but good. also people who i respect very much and then z trip will be performing live on our ramp so that will be the music we hear while we're skating is him mixing up. And he, he does a diverse selection of, of stuff when he mixes. So it's going to be really cool for the audience. Um, as far as the main stage, i got to say MGMT is uh, I'm pretty excited about. And, and I didn't know, I, as of today, I learned the Parquet Core is playing. And I love those guys. So this is a really exciting lineup. Yeah, it's cool, huh? And two more yeah. to be announced, right? Two more yeah. big names, right? Yeah, big names, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this. How old are your kids? Oh, they range in age. Uh, my oldest is 26, and then we have four teenage boys, and then my uh, youngest is my my only daughter is 10. See, that's real life right there. Oh my god! You know, god. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I, there's do they get how cool you them. are? Or no, are they just yeah. kind of? Do they get how cool you are? Or are they just you're just dad? I don't know about cool. Come on. They they get that that it provides them some great opportunities. <laughs> But, but I mean, we get to go to Hollywood premieres and things like that, right. so that's not lost so that, upon them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Although helps. they get a bit jaded on that stuff. You don't? Yeah, you're right. Totally. Kids yeah. My kids are like bit. the kinds of kids that are like, why are we sitting in the stands? How come we're not on the sidelines of the game, yeah. Dad? Why are we I'm not like, backstage? Guys, what's yeah. happening? Yeah. Like, what's <laughs> yeah. the deal here? I don't understand. No, they, they, they have a dose of reality, too, because yeah. my, my reach or my fame is sometimes is a lot, sometimes is not at all. That's fine with me, and, and right. I'm glad that they live in that sense of reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is good because you understand that we live that way. Oh, dude, yeah. it's just you know what it is. Always, <laughs> and it's, I know people want to get you to go, but it's just like when you're super famous and you're like the industry leader, 
and then you got all these kids. You just people think life is always perfect, and they just wonder. You're like, okay, well, here's some reality for you, Jack. Oh, I may yeah. be famous and be a famous skateboarder and everything, and I'm cool. I'm promoting my own concert here, but guess what? Um, I'm a real dad, and I got real things no, to do. No, I spent with. I spent three hours in the DMV on Friday renewing my license. Oh, That's the real deal. You do the real stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should you should book an appointment next time. <laughs> well, funny story. Um, I actually did renew it through the mail, and it didn't. I didn't get it, and I discovered it too late because I was getting on a flight the next day. Oh, you really needed it. There you go. Needed that's to my, go. That's my fun oh, story for so you. So you just made an immediate appointment. I had, no, I had to just go. Yeah, I had oh. to just go and wait in line and do it. Oh, God. Tony, thank you very much for coming. Great to see you always, and uh, hopefully we'll talk more between now and the time yeah. this, thank this you, goes Tony. on. Thank you, Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it, buddy.